Good afternoon. I'm Jim Pellegrino from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, and I appreciate very much the invitation to speak with you today about issues of assessment. Uh, as you can see here, the title of my talk is The Assessment Triangle, a conceptual guide for development and implementation of technology supported assessment systems. Uh, just a few comments about who I am. Uh, I am a learning scientist who focuses on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. And over the years, I've worked on a number of <clears throat> reports uh, for the National Research Council in the United States and other groups trying to synthesize some of what we know about the nature of learning, assessment, instruction, um, and these reports here are examples of them. And I and many others have tried to use this body of knowledge to improve many aspects of the US education system. And I know that others across the globe have drawn upon these same uh, resources. But today, I wanna to talk to you about assessment and some ways to think about assessment systems. And to do that, I will draw upon um, a set of ideas that came from the uh, 2001 report, Knowing What Students Know, The Science and Design of Educational S Assessment. There's three parts to my presentation today. Uh, the first is about what is educational assessment. The second is about what is an assessment system. And the third is what are the roles of ICT in assessment and assessment systems. So let's start with first part. What is educational assessment and why is it challenging to do it well? Well, the first thing is to think about um, essentially what is assessment in general. Assessment, uh, regardless of the context, is always about gathering information about something for the purpose of making judgments about a current state of affairs, ostensibly to improve things. We assess air quality, we assess water quality, we assess the state of economy, of the economy. In educational assessment, the information that we collect is designed to help various stakeholders in the education system, teachers, administrators, policymakers, and the public infer what it is that students know and how well they know it. And presumably that is for the purpose of enhancing future outcomes. Now, some of these outcomes are far more immediate, such as the use of assessment in the classroom to improve student learning, but others are more delayed or more distal, such as the use of assessment for program evaluation. It's useful to also think about where assessment fits in the broader education system. Here I've depicted the fact that assessment is really uh, a part of a system connected to curriculum and instruction. And these three elements, curriculum, instruction, and assessment, need to be coordinated and consistent with each other. By curriculum, I mean the nature of the content uh, to be learned usually as specified in, in standards or frameworks. Instruction for me is the sets of things that teachers and students do uh, to help students master that content, master that knowledge base. And assessment is what we do to try to monitor the progress of student learning. It's very important that these three things be well aligned with each other because if they are misaligned, uh, essentially what will happen is instruction will not reflect the goals that we have for student learning uh, and oftentimes assessment can be responsible for this because assessment doesn't really truly reflect the goals of the curriculum. Uh, of course, it would be far easier to maintain alignment of these three things if all three emanated from theories and research on the nature of knowing and learning. I'll come back to that general idea as we talk about assessment. It's also important to identify what functions and purposes educational assessment serves. So if we think about the larger education system, educational assessment typically occurs in multiple contexts that range from the small scale of individual classrooms to a kind of intermediate scale, which involves school districts, to large scale, which involves states, nations, and internationally with assessments like PISA. And within and across these contexts, assessment can be used to accomplish different purposes. Um, one is to assist learning, the so-called formative use of assessment. Another 
is to measure individual or group achievement, a summative purpose of assessment, and yet another is to evaluate programs, often for uh, purposes of accountability. Now, one of the things that is often true about assessment is individuals aren't always happy about the assessments they have. And it turns out that assessment of student learning is, is a real challenge. And it's because of a fundamental issue, which is we can never truly know what a student knows. We do not have a way to actually look inside a student's head and directly measure the nature of their knowledge and proficiency and competency. So we have to understand that assessment is always a process of reasoning from evidence. And it is the quality of that evidence and the quality of that reasoning that is very important when we think about the role of assessment in the education system. In the Knowing What Students Know report, we referred to the assessment triangle as a way to try to capture the three interacting and essential elements of the assessment process. Um, the first of these is cognition. Uh, essentially, cognition refers to theories, models, and data about how students represent knowledge and develop competence in a domain of instruction and learning, such as mathematics or science or history. That foundation essentially then drives the observations because it helps us identify the tasks or situations that will allow one to observe students' performance from which we will make inferences through an interpretation process, a way of making sense of the evidence that's coming from students' performances and connecting it back to the underlying conception about the nature of knowledge that we're interested in and, get, and gaining an inference about. So this whole issue of reasoning from evidence is fundamental when we think about assessment. Now, what, what is most important in this whole process or is, serves as the cornerstone of this are models of development of domain knowledge. They are critical because they actually tell us what are the important aspects of knowledge that we should be assessing and they therefore guide or give us strong clues as to how such knowledge can and should be assessed. In turn, this can lead to assessments that yield more instructionally useful information, which then can also develop, guide the development of coherent systems of assessments. So just a couple of takeaway points from this first part. Um, it is useful to remind ourselves that assessment is not a simple matter. It's not just one thing. It actually takes multiple forms to serve multiple purposes. Assessment needs to be part of an integrated system of curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And designing good assessment is actually very challenging. We need a con solid conceptual foundation about what students should know and how they should know it. And then with that, we then need to be thoughtful about how we pose problems or design situations and also what expectations we have about the meaning and value of student responses. So let me turn to the second part about what is an assessment system and why do we need think care, to think carefully about designing one. So we can start by defining an assessment system in terms of what it's not. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Kola Darshi. A collection of assessments does not entail a system any more than a pile of bricks constitutes a house. This is basically telling us that a system has to be designed such that it is composed of elements that systematically work together in terms of the intended functions and interpretive uses. And there are some important system design properties and principles, and three of them are identified here, coherence, comprehensiveness, and continuity. By coherence, we mean the fact that the conceptual model of student learning that underlies the various assessments within the system should be compatible. For example, the conceptual base for a state or district level assessment should be a broader version of one that makes sense at the finer grain classroom level. By comprehensiveness, we mean that a range of approaches are used to provide a variety of evidence to support educational decision making. No single assessments should be a definitive indicator of what a student knows. It is incapable of providing that breadth and depth of information. And continuity 
refers to the fact that the system should be able to measure student progress over time. And there are multiple sets of observations over time that are conceptually linked so that change can be observed and interpreted. Models of student progress in learning should underlie the entire assessment system. This little diagram is an illustration of what a multi-level assist assessment system might look like. Here we have three levels. At the base is classroom assessment. Above that is school or district level assessment. And at the top is, um, is state or national level assessment. Notice as we go up this pyramid, uh, the scope of the assessment becomes smaller. Um, and the important thing to recognize here is that to, for a system to be coherent and it has to be integrated, that is, it has to, there has to be coordination across the system's levels and purposes. Um, it has to be unified by common learning goals derived from learning theory, from research and content standards. And it has to be synchronized by these unifying progress variables that map out the expected trajectories of learning. And if you look at the diagram at the base, you see that those three corners, targeted goals for student learning, in many ways respect, uh, uh, um, refers to the cognition part of the assessment triangle. The quality assessment tools refers to the observation part and the quality use refers to the interpretation part of the assessment triangle. So how should the different assessments in the system be organized? Typically what we want is a multi-level system where each level fulfills a clear set of functions and has a clear set of intended users of the assessment information. The assessment tools are designed to serve the intended purposes and design is optimized for the function served. And as I said before, the levels should be articulated and conceptually coherent. That is, they share the same underlying concept of what the targets of learning are at a given grade level and what the evidence of attainment should be. But then they provide information at the grain size and on the time scale appropriate for translation into action at each of those respective levels. So let me turn to part three. Uh, and address what are some of the roles for ICT in the design and execution of assessment systems. We can start by just talking about the limitations of many current assessments, whether they include ICT or not. Often the assessments we have emphasize disconnected declarative knowledge with little bits and pieces of factual knowledge. They therefore neglect integrated schematic knowledge structures in areas of math, science, and history that we know is so important for student competence. They tend to emphasize procedural algorithms and skills, and they neglect strategic thinking skills, and they provide limited evidence and limited work of students addressing or solving authentic problems. There are many affordances of technology for assessment design and use, and here I've just tried to identify a few of them and map them onto the three vertices of the assessment triangle. So for example, we can tap a broader repertoire of cognitive skills and knowledge uh, because we're able to go beyond conventional practices for item presentation and implement various kinds of task designs and item formats that capitalize on the benefits of technology and media. We're also capable of recording and scoring complex aspects of behavior. Um, and this has implications for both the observation and interpretation vertices of the assessment triangle. And we can therefore also analyze complex aspects of student performance because the data we have collected is richer. Finally, it's important to note that technology also allows us to embed in assessments in learning environments. That is connecting assessment with curriculum and instruction. So when we think about assessment system design and ICT, uh, we have to realize that the assessment system needs to be designed so it uses tasks, tools, and technologies that are appropriate to desired inferences about student achievement, what we want to make. We don't force everything into a fixed testing format or certain kind of task model. And it supports the use of a range of tasks uh, including performances, portfolio projects, and fixed and open response tasks as needed and as appropriate. It also provides information at a grain size and on the time scale appropriate for translation into action by the different users of the information 
at the different levels of the system. So the use of ICT should add efficiency as well as value. There should be return on investment with respect to meeting the needs of users of assessment results. And we can talk a little bit about weaker and stronger uses of ICT in assessment systems. By weaker uses, basically there is no substantive change in what is assessed, how it is assessed, or how the information is used. And in these three uh, examples here about general uh, use content and scoring, fundamentally the technology is not transforming anything in terms of the substance of what's being assessed. It's just simply taking what we would do perhaps in a paper and pencil context and porting it over into technology with some efficiency, uh, but not doing much to change the nature of what's being assessed. Stronger uses of ICT and assessment system involve substantive changes in what's assessed, how it is assessed, and how the information is used. So for example, I've listed four things here. The technology can tremendously help us with the formative use of assessment, diagnostic assessment, providing feedback and coaching. It allows us to make use of the of multiple media, which allows us to do things in areas of mathematics, science, history, other areas that we can't do um, without technology. Um, it facilitates analysis and scoring, making use of natural language processing uh, and artificial intelligence. Um, and it facilitates a reporting process, particularly in terms of, of detailed reports of student performance, including that which feeds back directly into the classroom and instruction. So I wanna offer just a few concluding thoughts about this whole idea of using the assessment triangle as a conceptual guide for the development and implementation of technology supported assessment systems. I truly believe there is a better future uh, for assessment um, if we think about the development and implementation of technology supported assessment systems. Guiding this is the logic of the assessment triangle. Reminding ourselves all the time that assessment is reasoning from evidence and that proposition uh, should guide the design of all assessments in the system. Now the assessment system components have to be designed as a collaborative process with practitioners, students, researchers, developers, and policymakers taking into account their respective needs. And certainly expertise is needed from multiple disciplines, including the cognitive and learning sciences, content experts, measurement sciences, and the computational sciences. And the assessment system should be designed to be coherent across levels from classrooms to, through schools to boards of education to the government level. A few final comments to uh, individuals who are in the audience today who have different uh, roles in the education system. My advice to practitioners about the use of technology is that it isn't just about reductions in workloads for things like grading. You should focus more on how technology and better assessment design can get you more instructionally value, valuable information on a time scale that allows to you to support a formative assessment process, which is very powerful for student learning. To ed tech developers, the use of technology isn't just about faster or cheaper tests and or scoring. The focus should be on how technology and better assessment design can get teachers and other educators more instructionally valuable information and in a time sensitive way. And to those of you who are educational policy makers, the use of technology isn't just about cheaper tests and or faster scoring and reporting. You should focus more on how technology and better assessment design can get everyone in the system more, valued inf more valid information to use and improve the education system uh, since that is an essential way for you to allocate resources. So I thank you again for inviting me today. Uh, I hope this provides some food for thought for your further conversations today. And I hope that in a non-COVID-19 world, uh, sometime in the future, we will be able to collaborate. Um, and I wish you well and thank you again for inviting me.